This is the third video in our series on how to use uh, the computer and the different devices connected to it. In this video we're going to talk about how to connect uh, a CPU and memory to a screen and how to use it to show things on the screen. In the first video we talked about just using the CPU and memory. In the second video we talked about connecting CPU and memory to disk and in this video we are going to connect it to a screen. The way most people use a screen today is for example like this. Here we see the desktop of uh, an Ubuntu desktop distribution. We have windows with different contents. Uh, or we might for example use uh, play a video game. Uh, here we have a modern looking video game. Let's go back to the basics. What is a screen really. <clears throat> so it is a, basically a rectangle of pixels. On the right side here we see a small rectangle of pixels where one of the pixels have been colored in uh, with the color green. Each pixel has a coordinate, an xy coordinate. Uh, the green pixel here for example has a coordinate 3, uh, 2. Each pixel can be set to a color and the color is encoded as an RGB value. That is the amount of red, the green and blue um, that the pixel contains. So this pixel here, for example, uh, contains the value 0, 1, 0. Um, it is fully saturated for green, so therefore the, uh, the, the pixel is green. Now, all pixels are, re are redrawn at regular intervals. For example, uh, we can redraw all pixels every 60 milliseconds. This gives a 60 hertz screen. Now, what instructions, uh, what are the basic essential instructions to work with a screen? First, we need to get the width, the height, and the density of the screen. The width and the height is given in pixels, and the density is given in pixels per meter. Having the density will allow us to reproduce uh, an image of a certain size on a screen. The second instruction is to display a rectangle of pixels. And the third instruction is to wait for the, the next to draw to finish. Because the screen will draw all pixels and then wait a little bit and then uh, do the drawing again. Let us first look at the first instruction getting the size and the dimensions of the screen. Now this function here uh, first takes a device number. We might have many screens connected to our computer. It then gives three pointers, takes three pointers that will each get the width. The first will get the width, the second the height, and the third the density. This is how we would use uh, the function. We pass in our pointers and when it completes, we get our results. So for this screen I'm working on here, the width would be 1920, the height would be 1020, and the density would be about 4000 pixels per meter. The second instruction is display. This function takes an, uh, a list of pixels that it, that it sets up to be displayed on the screen. Now this function does not wait for the image to be drawn. Uh, so we might uh, change the uh, image uh, as many times as we want. And it is the image that is present when the draw actually occurs that is being displayed. If we want to wait for the draw to finish, we can call wait for draw. And this function will simply wait until the current draw or the next draw is done and then it returns. So here we have our three essential screen instructions. And you might be asking, is that it? What about, for example, windowing systems, screen cards, rendering pipelines, rendering frameworks, DirectX, OpenGL, what about multiple screens, and many, many other issues. Now, the interesting thing here is that we can achieve all of these uh, things by 
connecting our screen indirectly through another uh, set of CPU and memory, which might be, for example, a GPU. And the GPU contains many uh, processing units and a lot of memory that uh, can be used to create some image on the screen. And this part here might contain a rend rendering pipeline, a rendering system, but the essential so of using a screen is still the same down here. And that is the three instructions we just discussed. In order to use these uh, instructions or functions, we need a driver. Uh, a driver might be, can be made with many different technologies. We can use the SDL library, the simple direct media layer, or we can use OpenGL or DirectX. We can use the Windows API. We can use the X window system in Linux or the Wayland system in Linux, or we can use a canvas in the browser. And there are also many other alternatives here. In this video, we're going to show a driver created using the SDL library. So this is the main function of our uh, example program. The first thing we need to do is to initialize the, um, the screen device. In this example here, we're going to create a window in the windowing system on the computer. And this window is going to be run, running a different thread. We set up two semaphores. The first semaphore, the, the first semaphore uh, will signal when the initialization of the screen is done. And the second semaphore will signal to us when uh, the, the current draw or the next draw has finished. So we start our screen thread and then we wait for the initialization to be done. Once it is has once it has been initialized, we can run our program. Now, this program here is where we only use three devices. We only use the CPU and memory and the screen. Let us now dig into and see how the uh, screen um, driver thread function here works. This is basically how we set up a screen using SDL. Uh, we set up the SDL window here with a certain size and we signal to it that we will be using uh, our, the RGB color format to um, draw pixels on the screen. We also signal to it that we will be listening for the event that the draw is finished. We then allocate uh, an array of pixels and set it to completely black. This is our starting point for our screen. This is the second part of the function. Here we run an infinite loop and this loop will draw the uh, image, the current image on screen that we have set using our display function. Now the first time this is run, we signal that the initialization is done. Uh, and we then signal that the current draw is done. So that was the initialization and the rendering loop. Let's now look at the implementation of the different instructions. So we start with the first instruction, getting the screen size. Now in this example here, we, uh, we have a set a width and a height and a density based on the window we're going to use. The second instruction draws or sets up the image to be displayed. Here we take our image as an array of pixels. Uh, each pixel has three values, RGB, that is encoded between zero and one. Now the STL window we have set up use a different encoding. So we draw, we map our encoding into the STL en encoding, which is a byte-based encoding. Uh, where each value is between 0 and 255. And we then pack our values, uh, red, green, and blue, into a pixel that SDL can work with. The third and final instruction is the wait for draw. Um, we simply use our semaphore here. 
to signal to our program that um, we would like to wait until the draw has finished. The following here is a program that then only uses CPU, memory, and our screen uh, via our screen driver. The first thing we do here is to uh, ask the screen to give us its width, height, and density. We then allocate um, pixels to hold all the color information that we will draw on the screen. Now in this example here, we need to allocate a width times height times the size of our type, which is double, times three, because we're storing R, G, and D. We then run an infinite loop. This infinite loop first sets our entire image to zero, which means black. We can then compute uh, X and I values if you want to run um, some kind of animation. And then we can draw a rectangle into our pixels. Now in, in, in this example here, we draw a 50 times 50 rectangle with the color white onto the screen. We then ask for this uh, image to be displayed and we wait for the draw to finish and then we do the whole thing again. Uh, I set up a simple animation using uh, this library here and here we can see that the uh, box is bouncing around. Uh, the rate that it is bouncing around or it, the movement rate here is based on the hertz of the screen. So uh, it is moving one pixel every 16 milliseconds. Now this could of course be set up to uh, show an animation, uh, a game, a video, and many, many other things. This program here works as long as we have a CPU, memory, and a screen. The only thing we need is a screen driver. Uh, this is a simple and powerful abstraction in order to work with screens in general. In the next video in the series, we're going to look at how to connect a CPU and memory to a clock device. If you found the contents of this video interesting, then you might want to check out this book on which the content is based. Thank you.